hey guys welcome to this video this is yet another esa video but today happens to be saturday and we wanted to keep this video very light so i have decided that in this video we are going to solve some very simple problems and hence the name fun with dsa so here we are going to solve some very simple lead code problems i have identified a set of uh, i think how many of these one two three four five six seven eight nine around ten problems i'm not sure whether i'll be uh, able to solve all of these uh, the idea is to just solve some simple problems to keep this video very light because this happens to be a Saturday and we just want to enjoy solving problems and that's why I have chosen some very 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 easy problems. So let me actually go back to this first one and the problem is very simple. So it's like build array from permutation given a zero based permutation nums right it is zero index just like any array has to be. Uh, build an array uh, ans uh, answer of same length where answer i equals nums nums i for each uh, let's say i which is greater than or equal to zero and less than nums dot length and return it that is quite interesting so if i have to re-explain it to you what is it that we need to do in this problem so we are given a permutation nums right which is a zero indexed array we have to build a new array ans of the same length as nums right so we have to basically create a new array and it is going to be of the same size as the nums array the only difference is that the answer i yani ki ans i is equal to nums of nums i so we have to first of all find nums i and then we have to go to that specific element of nums and that is what is going to be the value of my uh, ans i so it happens to be simple problem yep so let's go ahead and let's try to solve it and uh, instead of trying out multiple techniques i'm assuming that all of you know python if that is not the case you can go ahead and watch my python verse series it has got a lot of python videos very simple python videos you should definitely check it out and uh, we are going to use some python based concepts to solve this problem so i'm simply going to write result equals let's say I would simply write nums of nums i for i in range let's say uh, it's going to be length of nums and that is what we need to return so simply return result this is called as list comprehension where we are trying to generate a new list uh, based on a given list uh, using the criteria which is given in the problem that is so you can actually name it ans also because that is how they have named it in the question but it shouldn't make a difference let me try to run it and let's see whether we are yep we are able to get the correct result let me now try to submit it and 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 yes the problem has been submitted uh, it's like a fairly good time 109 milliseconds uh, fairly good in terms of memory as well so yep that is like this problem is solved i hope you liked the solution which we have generated here it's just one line of python code actually what we can do is we can probably try to return this thing directly let's see if we can do that just to make it one liner so in python that's the beauty that a lot of code can be written in one line so yep you can try this method also uh, whether it helps in terms of uh, time or memory that we can check I'm not expecting big change. Oh my God, it has actually taken slightly more memory. That is quite interesting. Cool, but yep. So I think this is good enough solution. The one which we have just seen, we can go with this. So this is the problem number one. I hope you understand what the problem was and the solution which we generated. Let's move to the next one. Let me just remove this problem from here. Uh, this is called as concatenation of array given an array nums of length n so we are given an array nums it is passed here it has got a length n you want to create an array ans i mean ans or result whatever we want to create of length 2n where ans i is equal to nums i and ans i plus n is equal to nums nums i again for this okay so we just have to create an array of length 2n got it specifically ans is the concatenation of two nums arrays got it so i think this should not be a big problem maybe what we can write is ans equals nums star 2 we can use some python here 
and we can return ans let's see whether it works so this is uh, more or less this is basically a replication right and in python we can use the star operator to replicate an array okay let me change this yeah let me try to submit this so this is how replication works and i think i have solved this problem a lot of times in all the different uh, languages i believe i created a video illusion of knowledge and there i took this problem only as an example so atms uh, beats this many users memory is 16 beats this many users okay there's one more thing which i would like to try once again because i think i did that during the illusion of knowledge video as well so let me try to do this what if we do because we are using python so let's say nums dot extend let's pass nums and return nums let's see what happens i hope this will also solve the problem so extend happens to be a method on list which basically helps us to uh, like concatenate a list to a list so here what i'm doing is yep so i would say slight improvement perhaps isn't it yep 80 77 and uh, memory is approximately the same so no big deal awesome so i hope you understood this problem as well let me just cross this one as well so now the next one is shuffle the array so given an array nums consisting of two n elements in this format uh, by the way i'm so sorry if you're getting some background noise because there seems to be some noise which is coming to me and i'm not sure whether this mic will be able to filter that because it's a i think yeah i'm sorry about it so given the array nums consisting of two n elements in the form x1 x2 so until xn similarly y1 y2 so until yn return an array in the form x1 y1 x2 y2 xn yn okay okay cool so basically we are given uh, uh like it's like uh, how should i put it so we have to uh, reposition the array reposition the elements of the array because currently if you will see that we are given elements in the form x1 to xn and y1 to yn what we have to do is we have to like uh, reposition them uh, we have to write them in the format x1 y1 x2 y2 xn yn and so on right cool so let's try to use the same uh, i would say can we use list comprehension here or we'll have to do something else so what we are looking at is uh, this happens to be your x uh, okay first of all let me try to solve it in a simpler way so that i have like a better solution then i can think about whether i can apply list comprehension on this or not so i am given the list so what i can do is i can simply say for i in range let's say uh n perhaps then what i have to do is i have to say that i have got a result variable here so result is let's say an empty list then what i can do is result dot append now what do i need to append or perhaps let me just call extend here as well now this is something interesting you can see what i'm trying to do here first thing which i need to add here is nums i then the other thing which i can add here is nums n plus i sorry not n plus one but n plus i and then finally once all this is done we can simply return result okay so let me try to run this code let me see whether it executes or not okay it's executing perfectly well let, now let me try to submit the code okay so seems like we are taking some amount of memory execution time seems to be okay still better but uh, we are taking some memory let's see whether something can be done about it let's see whether we can somehow convert this to a, a list comprehension or not so we can simply say that uh, this is given to us like i'm not able to think right now perhaps there should be a solution which is based on uh, if i do this it will actually lead to a uh, 2d array so that's why i'm not able to think of a solution which is based on list comprehensions at least not as of now uh, we can perhaps use some sort of lambda function here but cool i think i'm fine with this for now so if you have got any good solution for this like wherein we are writing slightly more pythonic code i would request that you share it in the comments i'd be more than happy to go through it 
so for now this is uh this is the problem which we solved i hope you understood the intuition behind the problem i hope you understood the solution for the problem let's move ahead let's move to the next problem so here we go find the value of a variable after performing operations okay there is a programming language with only four operations and one variable that is x so there is a variable called as x and we we have the uh, operations like plus plus x and x plus plus uh, so these operations this basically increments the value of the variable x by one and then there are minus minus x and x minus minus the decrement the value of the x by one okay they seem to be simple operations initially the value of x is zero given an array of string uh, strings are given to us like operations are given to us in the form of strings so containing list of operations return the final value of x after performing all the operations got it so initial value of x is given to us as zero and now what i have to do is i have to say for operation in operations i have to apply all the operations on x one by one now the logic is simple here if the variable has got plus plus uh, in it or if the variable is equal to this we can pr perhaps do it something like this we can because there are just two variables if let's say operation in something like this like plus plus x or let's say x plus plus then what we can do is then we can simply say that x plus equals one and we uh, otherwise what we can do we can simply say x minus equals one and at the end we can simply say return x let's go ahead let's run this code and let's see okay so uh, accepted now let me go ahead and submit the solution yes so it's submitted not able to beat a lot of people when it comes to memory but compute time wise it's perfectly fine so let's go ahead and see if there is anything else we can do here so memory wise that's a problem where is it that we are taking the memory so x is equal to zero that is a single variable so here we are actually uh, we have created a, a list can we just try to not create a list can we do something like for example if operation operation is already there right so what if i do operation zero equals equals let's say uh, plus or operation let's say two equals equals uh, plus then we have to say x plus and otherwise we have to say x minus i hope you understood what does this mean so in both these scenarios like uh, in both the increment scenarios we have got a plus sign uh, either at the zeroth index or at the second index we can also write this as minus one so now let's go ahead and check okay accepted let me try to sum it now okay that sounds cool uh, 94 percent users have been beaten by the solution that's great and even in terms of memory i think we are now performing better so i hope you understand understood this problem as well let's move to the next one cool so now we have got number of good pairs now what is the meaning of number of good pairs given an array of integers nums return the number of good pairs a pair i j is called good if nums i equals equals nums j for i less than j got it and nums dot length is less than or equal to 100 and these are the values so like all the values in the nums i are in the range from 1 to 100 so i'm sure there can be uh, very 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 uh, i would say a lot of solutions uh, for this problem but let me try the brute force one first so what i'm going to do is i will simply go through all the elements for i in range so i want to go till the length of nums and then i want to subtract one from that the reason for subtracting one is because uh, the condition says that i has to be less than j and now when i have 4j in range i have to start from i plus one and i have to go all the way up till length of nums right and the condition is very simple that if i equals equals j you will simply say that count equals zero and then you will simply do count plus equals one return count as you can say this is o of n square solution if you have any other suggestions 
feel free to write them in the comments uh, okay first of all I'm getting a wrong answer the output was supposed to be zero Ah, uh, okay not I equals J but you have to say nums I equals equals nums J so given that it is a Saturday I think I am half asleep probably but yeah let's go ahead and run it again yep so all the solutions are accepted for these test cases now let me go ahead and submit this and let's see how we are performing yeah as i was anticipating only beating 55 percent of the users and then beating very less number of users when it comes to memory let's think about it i be i would actually leave that as a homework for you please think about how exactly we can make it slightly more efficient and then we can discuss it got it let's move to the next problem the next problem says number of employees who met the target so there are n employees in a company numbered from 0 to n minus 1 each employee i has worked for hours i hours in the company okay the company requires each employee to work for at least target hours you are given a zero indexed array of non negative integers hours of length n and a non negative integer target return the integer denoting the number of employees who worked at least target hours okay this is again a simple array based problem why is it c let me make it python yeah so target is given we just have to again let's say we have got a count which is uh, initialized to zero and then what we can do is for hour in hours if let's say hour greater than or equal to count sorry not count but target so let me write target here I would simply say count plus equals one and then I will simply return count let me run the code so seems like yeah it's taking some time to execute but anyways so let me submit this and let's see whether we have completed it or not oh that is so bad only 9.25 percent of users it's beating which means uh, it's not very efficient when it comes to time complexity memory wise it's still doing better i mean even though something even better can be done okay so count is given as zero what is it that can be done here and what exactly is it that we are looking for for hour in hours if hour is greater than or equal to target we are saying that count plus equals one and return count again i'll i'll simply leave this as a homework for you to optimize this very simple code i'm sure there are many ways to optimize it right but the idea for me right now is just to solve the problems i'm not very much concerned about optimization in these problems but yeah for some future video i think we can definitely do that so feel free to suggest ideas on how we can optimize this meanwhile i'll go to the next one kids with the greatest number of candies let's see what this problem is all about there are n kids with candies you are given an integer array candies where each candies i represents the number of candies the ith kid has okay and an integer extra candies denoting the number of extra candies that you have understood so uh, like you are given an array uh, where you uh, you are basically given that for all the n kids how many candies does each kid have so that is uh, described by the array called as candies return a boolean array result of length n where result i is true if after giving ith kid all the extra candies they will have the greatest number of candies among all the kids or false otherwise so if you want to have so this this is a i would say this is a clever way of asking for the maximum of the array and then based on that uh, generating a new array note that multiple kids can have greatest number of candies okay so we are using python we are, we are going to actually uh, utilize some of the built-in functions of python in this and uh, you can check the python verse series there we have actually talked about the built-in functions and we have actually used a lot of built-in functions in the past as well so what i'm going to do is i'm going to say that max candies max candies equals even though the more pythonic way of writing this is this but i have seen that uh, on lead code most people end up using this camel case only so i'll simply go max candies equals max of candies now what we need to do is we have to generate 
the result array which is going to be so it's going to be true if uh, candies i plus uh, max sorry candies i plus extra candies is greater than or equal to uh, max candies right because max is the criteria else false got it okay else false but also we have to write for i in range length of candies now let's try to return the result this is yet another way of using list comprehensions again a very pythonic feature i hope you have understood list comprehensions let me go ahead and submit this thing as well okay it seems like a good solution because this time we are beating 97 percent of the users memory wise also i think we are doing fairly well so that sounds great let's cross this one as well let's move to the next one richest customer wealth okay you are given an m cross n integer grid accounts where accounts ij is the amount of money the ith customer has in the jth bank return the wealth that the richest customer has okay the customer uh, the customer's wealth is the amount of money they have in all their bank accounts the richest customer is the customer that has the maximum wealth understood understood cool i think this problem i would like to talk about a bit more before i actually jump into the solution for this problem so let's say let's first try to understand what exactly this problem is trying to say so this is the bank accounts of the ith person in in all the j banks let's say one 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 okay one one two not a problem so this is for customer a this is how it works and if i talk about the wealth of customer b then it's given to us in another array so that would be like let's say two 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 now if you will see that two 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 has a sum of six so b is wealthiest and the sum of a is like let's say one and one two and two four so b is what we need to return we actually need to return the wealth of b which means we need to return the sum of this array so if i have to talk about it in technical terms we are given a 2d array we have to first find out uh, out of this 2d array we have to find out the array with the maximum sum and then we have to return the maximum out of all those sums so let's go ahead and do it so let me check uh first of all let's do one thing so for all the arrays what we can do is uh let's say maximum or perhaps max wealth equals max of sum of accounts i don't think this may be the wrong answer but let me actually try to run and see whether it's working or not then we will correct it that's not a problem so we are finding the sum of accounts and we are finding the max so what exactly is wrong here int and list uh, unsupported operand types for plus int and list why is it so okay let's actually do something else so what i'm going to do is i'm going to say that uh, mx equals let's say negative infinity of float so float uh, minus inf right this is my max value now for account in accounts right so now you would know that account is basically a list and what i have to do is i have to simply say that if uh, your account sum of account is greater than mx then you will say mx equals sum of account and you will finally return uh, mx let's go ahead let's run this code and let's see i'm sure again so for this one as well there are going to be solutions uh, other than this solution as well and i would request you to feel free comment on the video this is a worst solution which i have seen but it's perfectly fine given that i'm solving like 9 to 10 problems i'm okay that even if i'm not able to get the best results in some of these that's not a problem for me okay so <clears throat> now I, if i have to see that how exactly can i get the if i have to let's say get uh, the maximum what exactly is it that i can do let me actually try to write once again what i tried to write before so i'm looking for max 
right and inside of let's say some uh, account for account in accounts this is another way of writing it at least that's what I'm thinking so let me go ahead and run this okay cool now let me try to submit this one so in this one we are just trying to use list comprehension and that actually has improved the runtime uh, even though not much improvement in terms of memory but yeah you can again this is another homework feel free to comment let us know how exactly we can do better in terms of memory as well so yep this question is also solved i hope you understood the uh, intuition behind this problem and the solution also let's move to the next one the next one is count pairs whose sum is less than target got it so what is that what exactly is it that we have to do here so we are given a zero indexed integer array nums of length n and integer target we have to return the number of pairs i j where zero greater than sorry zero uh, basically i and j are in the range 0 and n uh, and we have to say that nums i plus nums, nums is less than target i think this is very similar to the problem which we previously solved and there we had checked whether they are equal to the target and now we have to check that they have to be less than the target so let's try to use the same technique here as well so what we have to do is for i let's say in range uh, 1 sorry nums length of nums minus 1 because i has to be less than j right then we have for j in range let's say length nums but it has to start from i plus 1 because j has to be greater than i let's apply these columns here and what we have to do is we have to simply say that if nums i nums i plus let's say nums j is less than target uh, you have to simply say count plus equals one count has to be taken as a variable I can write it here count equals one sorry not one but zero and at the end I simply have to return count now because these are easy problems it's okay to have not the efficient solution but uh, like there are problems where these kinds of solutions may not work because I'm using this n square approach but because this happens to be an easy problem you can see the tag is easy here that's why it's perfectly fine to use this kind of techniques for this uh, this set of problems okay i've submitted it and as you can see that not the best runtime not the best memory but i'm okay to live with it even though i would like to see what exactly is it that i can do with this problem so i think there is a there's an efficient approach possible not talking about it right now as I mentioned the agenda is to solve more problems so let's move to the next problem next and the last problem is running sum of 1d array okay so given an array nums we define the running sum of an array as running sum i is equal to sum from nums 0 to nums i okay 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 so this is an interesting problem this is this is more of a I, I would say cumulative sum or you must have heard about something called as prefix sum array so return the running sum of nums got it so let's go ahead uh, what we have to do is we have to simply say that for i in range let's say nums we should probably start with one and we'll go up till length of nums because the first element or the zeroth element it will remain the same absolutely no change in that uh, but for all the subsequent elements what we can do is we can simply say that nums i equals nums of i plus nums of i minus 1 now let's return nums even though we could have created a new array as well but here they are saying that return the running sum of nums so i have tried to modify this or uh, i have tried to modify this array only so let me go ahead and run this and let's see okay it's passing all the test cases let me submit it and let's see whether we are able to get the result or not cool so beating 70 percent approximately beating 98 percent in terms of memory we haven't taken much memory and in terms of runtime also i think we have done fairly good job so this is it uh, we ended up solving around 10 problems they were all very easy problems 
the idea was to keep this video very light and solve maximum number of problems we solved around 10 problems i hope you were able to understand the concept uh, behind each of these problems what you can do is you can now go to lead code and you can also try to solve these problems if you were not solving side by side if you were solving side by side then that's great you have already i would say what is the term called as you have seized your day perhaps i think that's how you put it seize the day right you have already seized your day awesome guys thanks a lot for watching this video i'll see you in the next one till then take care and bye bye have a nice weekend